Yeah, so, so that's me. I think I will stand on here. Uh, so I'm, I work at the Institute of Physics. I'm head of education there. Uh, I was a teacher. In fact, I trained here. This is a trip down memory lane for me, especially when I go up to the top floor. Uh, I trained here, um, yeah, a number of tens of years ago. Taught in Hertfordshire and ended up as a head of science and then moved into supporting uh, teachers through the wonderful Institute of Physics. Uh, so I echo Caroline's congratulations. It's, a, it's a quite a tough year, but well done. You got through, and here you are ready to go. What we're going to talk about today, or what I'm going to talk about, is uh, who we are at the Institute, some things about what we think, uh, then what we do, how we can support you, why we do it, and then, then what happens next. So the Institute itself is a, a membership charity. We have an education arm, but basically we're, we are... Um, a membership professional body for 50,000 professional physicists. Uh, we provide professional recognition for physicists, but also for teachers, and we're very keen that teachers become part of that community of, of physics, as I will say later. Uh, within the Institute, we have a, a council who decides what we do, and over the years, as there have been increasing difficulties with physics education, uh, a shortage of physics teachers, uh, and so on, they have got put more and more money into projects we do. And then we've had government funding. So we're now quite uh, a sizable group team at the Institute. We, uh, th there we are standing outside our old building, actually, um, last summer. There are about 20 of us in the office in London. And then we have a network of people around the country. So, so in the office is, is part of the team, but also Joe and Joe, who, who weren't um, available for the photograph last year, and you'll see them. One Joe is at the back, and the other Joe is <laughs> at the back. Uh, Ian Lawrence, who's, who works remotely, who, who thinks about uh, curriculum and supporting um, physics teachers through the web, has produced our SPT resources. Gary, who looks after our physics network coordinators, of which there are 35, uh, sorry, 50, I beg your pardon, and they look a bit like Ruth. Who is that? So we have 50 people looking a bit like Ruth. We have another one here that looks very similar, actually. Uh, Jerry in the middle. Uh, any other physics network? Alessio is here, I saw. Ah, and Sue. So we've got 50 people around the country who you can contact and who can support you directly in your schools. We also have a network of 35 teaching and learning coaches who do more, um, more intensive work in schools. So you may find yourself in a school that's supported by a teaching and learning coach, but they're, they're not so freely available as the physics network coordinators. About five years ago, we um, got together as a, as a group and wanted to come up with a, a, an inspirational phrase for ourselves, really, but also for the, the wider community. So, what is it that we think we're doing? And we came up with this phrase, uh, which I won't read to you, but the, the, I'll take out bits of it. Cultural entitlement. So it sounds a bit, bit highfalutin, but we believe it. So in the same way that children should be uh, exposed to some history, some of their history, they should know about geography, they should probably read some poetry, maybe have access to learning a musical instrument, at least uh, do, do music in a, in a group, these are, these are bits of their culture. They should know about, have exposure to, and have an opportunity to participate in those uh, activities. In the same way, physics is a cultural entitlement. There are aspects of physics and the way of thinking like a physicist that are unique, and if children don't get access to those, then they are being denied something that could or would very likely enrich their lives. That doesn't mean to say that they have to follow physics beyond, at the moment, the age of 16, but they should get, they should get exposure to a, uh, an authentic version of physics, thinking like a physicist, before that point, so that they can make a, an informed choice. So it is more than just a subject in the curriculum. It is their entitlement to see what it's like to think like a physicist, an intellectual and cultural entitlement. And the single biggest fit factor that will enable them to do that and will determine uh, their progress in physics, their enjoyment of it, their engagement with it, is uh, the teacher in front of them. So all the evidence continually points to 
uh, the teacher in front of a group of children being the biggest influence on their engagement with that subject. So you can muck about with the curriculum, you can build new schools, uh, you can change the exam system, but if you don't put the right people in front of kids, they won't be engaged, they won't learn well. And that, of course, is something I hope you all believe. In fact, even from your experience, I'm sure you, you know that it is the case. But the reason that you're going into teaching is you believe you can make a difference by standing in front of those children and talking to them about, in this case, physics. So we need a complete workforce. It needs to be engaged itself. It needs to be professional. And the teachers within it need to be accomplished. And they need to continually develop. So part of the reason for today, I think, is to, uh, to begin a relationship with you. We are deeply committed to a community of people teaching physics. We are dead against the idea of isolated people relearning constantly uh, what it is to be a physics teacher. So please do see today as the first step in that relationship with us. Uh, or it might be the second. You may have built a, a relationship with, with the Institute already through your training. I mentioned our membership before. And this is something, of course, that we can say as a membership organisation, is that teaching physics is doing physics. So in the same way as the team at CERN identified the Higgs particle, or a particle that shows Higgs-like properties, we can say to you, you are doing physics just as much as that team. So partly, it's doing the job of physics. It's keeping uh, physics as a discipline alive in schools, but also, you will find increasingly that you are pushing forward the frontiers of understanding of physics. And this, this is something that I think when I was teaching came as a bit of a surprise to me, that you can think about the subject at a very deep level because you go back to some things that, that you haven't thought about for some time. You rethink about them and it will develop not just your understanding but the whole community's understanding of uh, physics, physics itself. What we can offer is routes to development, professional development through our network coordinators, uh, and also support. So we've got various mechanisms for support. I'll say more about those in a moment. What we think about physics itself, well, you, you won't be surprised th to know that we like it. We think that it's uh, deeply rewarding. It's not a bunch of content. It's not stuff that you have to learn, which is perhaps society's view of physics. It's a set of ways of thinking. It's looking at things in a reductionist way making sure that things are deeply consistent, that you can't, you can't have one bit of physics contradicting another. Uh, it's often mathematical. We use models. We use uh, empirical evidence. So we bring all of that together. That is, if you like, the, the method of physics. And it leads to the content. We know a lot about the world because people have used those ideas, those ways of thinking before. Uh, but physics goes beyond what has been discovered. It is those ways of thinking. And that's why I think it's a cultural entitlement. Because if you teach children to think like that, it is a, a richly and continually rewarding experience for them. Although I don't particularly practice physics anymore, I'm, I'm glad that I have all the tools that I came away with. I look at the world in a different way. It is an intellectual reward. So I'm sure that you'll all agree that there's nothing as satisfying as a physics explanation. <laughs> Mainly agree. Hmm, OK, OK. So in the education department, the work we do, we work in policy. So uh, a lot of it in recruitment. We've had some successes working with the government on changing the way that physics teachers are recruited, including the scholarships that were introduced about four years ago. Some of you may have benefited from them. Uh, we work on the curriculum, trying to bring in those ideas I, I just mentioned. Uh, we look at the assessment schemes and we, I think, try to keep the uh, awarding organisations honest a little bit if we can. We also do projects and produce uh, resources and then we have support networks. And I'll say more about each of those aspects now. So our particular concerns, I mentioned before, is the lack of specialist teachers. That's one big problem. So there are about... 30,000 science teachers in the country. You'd expect about 10,000 to be physics specialists. It's of the order of 6,000. So it's, it's quite a long way short. 
So therefore, recruitment and retention is a, is a problem for us. Incidentally, we have a much broader view of a physics specialist than just a physics graduate. It, it, as long as someone has trained to be a physics teacher in some way, that, that makes them a physics specialist. But just sticking them in front of a, a class and telling them to teach physics and giving them a book is not a physics specialist. So we, we worry about recruitment and retention. Uh, we worry about the curriculum. I mentioned it's a, at the moment it's a bit uncultured, it's a bit a set of ideas, a set of facts that you reproduce. We would like to see a, a sort of thematic approach to the curriculum and assessment and some useful drivers in accountability. If you've, if you've been in schools, you may notice, for example, at the moment, there's a, a focus and obsession almost with C grades, D to C grade. So that driver came out of an accountability measure, and that's a shame. It's a perverse driver, and I guess at the time it was a, a, an unforeseen consequence of the A star to C measures. And we're particularly interested in underrepresented groups. So uh, some socioeconomic groups and, of course, girls uh, don't tend to do physics. We produce resources. So there's a, a list of some of the resources we do. Uh, we've just launched a physics and football resource with Arsenal Football Club. So it's a, um, an after-school activity. We've got the reward cards in the uh, bottom right there uh, with, with every pun we could think of for physics. Uh, and... Um, the physics in concert resource, there's exoplanets that there's a, a workshop on today. Uh, I, I should say, incidentally, on the reward card, just a slight aside, what we found was there were science reward. There are companies that produce these, and there are science ones that exist, but there weren't any physics ones. And this is one of our continual battles, I think, is to get the identity of physics into schools, to get past the subject called science, the invented subject called science. There are the sciences, of which physics is one, uh, but the, the idea that science as a whole is one subject uh, has probably been, hasn't served, uh, served the A-levels terribly well, or the country. And uh, we have made some posters, actually, the best physics education posters ever made in the world. And you may think that I'm overstating it there, but I'm going to take a vote on that in a minute. So, I mentioned earlier about the, the bigger picture. The, the experience of having been a physicist. We wanted something that wasn't about careers, that wasn't about stuff or engineering or what physicists do. And we came up with this phrase of physics, see the world differently. So if you've, if you've studied physics to any level, your outlook will always be slightly different. Uh, and then we wanted to represent that on some posters. So this one, um, we've got a, a character in the bottom left who's using a telescope. We could say that that's a an artifact from physics, but it does let you see the world differently. You look through a telescope, it looks different. And, and this character is looking through it at the moon, so he's seeing a, a world differently in a sense there. He's looking at the moon. So we've got two so far. And then the bit that will blow your mind is that this poster glows in the dark. So in the dark, it looks like that. Yeah, so you turn the lights out and it changes like that, and you are seeing the poster, the world, the poster, differently. Now, the character is on the moon, so it's a different outlook. And what's he looking at? It's the blooming world. So he is seeing the world differently. Five takes on seeing the world differently. Right, I want a show of hands. Best physics education poster ever made in the history of the universe. There we go. Unanimous. Excellent. And you've all got it even more. Right there. There you are. So, uh, it, oh, they're excited. <laughs> it's kicking off, kicking off on Bedford Way. Uh, a little hint with it is if, you, if you've got a UV torch at school, you, it's worth charging it up. If you're going to demonstrate it by turning the lights out, it's worth just giving it a charge before the lesson with the UV torch. It just um, kind of uh, stimulates the, 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 the ink so it will glow better. Okay. Other things we do, we support teachers. So I mentioned the teacher network, the uh, 50 physics network coordinators around the country. If you go to the uh, website, put iop.org slash network, you will be taken to a, a map and you can find your nearest one. We have the stimulating physics network I mentioned. We've got mentoring, so I, I'm hoping that quite a lot of you are going to be mentored. You will have uh, a connection with one of our field workers. It might be a PNC or a TLC, that's a physics network coordinator in the top, or a teaching and learning coach. Uh, please do use them. So use them for subject, subject stuff. So if you're worried about how to teach something or you, you need some ideas, do contact your mentor. They will be able to help you. 
We have affiliated schools, so when you move into a school, you can find out if it's affiliated. Uh, you will be getting resources and discounts from us and a, um, a termly magazine, Classroom Physics. We have a, a forum uh, where we bring people together. Actually, we've got a meeting a week on Saturday to talk about policy, so we need to connect with teachers. Probably not initially, but when you get a bit further into your career, if you want to join with us more closely, uh, then please do join the Education Forum. And you can come and have an influence on uh, the way we work and the way we work with outside agencies. Talk Physics is our community forum online. Um, you may, I hope, have seen it already. If you haven't, it's talkphysics.org. You can have discussions. You can watch other people having discussions. Good way to pick up hints and tips. We've also got the SPT resources uh, for Key Stage 3, so deep narrative uh, resource for talking through how and why and what you might say to, to children about physics. Teaching Advanced Physics, TAP Resources uh, is also on our website. These are all linked at the end as well. And Practical Physics with, as you might expect, lots of ideas for practicals. We've run some pilot projects. We've, we're currently doing some pilot projects on improving gender balance. So we've got 20 schools we're, we're working with. Uh, and then a, a project looking at the whole school issue of gender balance. So not a physics project, but it is our conviction now that children are stereotyped by gender by the age of 11. And then even secondary schools don't tend to counter that. So, so that plays into physics, but it's a broader problem, that, that the roles that boys and girls are given are male and female. And, and we're, we're deeply concerned about that. We're trying to, to address it. Uh, and then also socioeconomic background uh, I mentioned earlier. We did a pilot project on ethnicity. This is a harder problem to, to um, work with because it isn't a straightforward in and out. There are, there are many uh, different uh, influences and uh, issues with, with people from different ethnic backgrounds taking physics. So there isn't a single thing we can address. Uh, why we're doing it, so I mentioned earlier um, about it being the cultural entitlement. We don't, we don't obsess about numbers of children doing A-level physics, but it is a useful thermometer. It gives a, a sort of measure of the state of the system. So you can see in the uh, mid-80s, about 45,000 students did A-level physics. And that crashed down to a, a, a low in 2006 of about 28,000. So a massive drop-off. You can see the other scientists, incidentally, were benefiting. This correlates almost exactly to the invention of a subject called science that I mentioned before, and the ability, therefore, of schools to recruit science teachers rather than physics, chemistry, and biology teachers. So when we look at this same, these same data for individual schools, we can identify schools, again as a thermometer, where not many children are going on to take A-level physics, so we would reckon there's some issue there. And remember, it's not just the five or six who might have done A-level, it's the whole 200 in a year group have had such a bad experience of physics that none of them have wanted to do it at A-level. So it's, it's a whole year group, a whole school that isn't getting that cultural entitlement. And what we tend to find is they, they will have a shortage of physics specialists in those schools. And the culture of physics has died in that school. There are about 500 schools that fall into that category, out of 3,500, so it's about a sixth. So you can see it's a, a real problem. This is a sixth of the population and not getting the cultural entitlement that we talked about before, I talked about before. And therefore, children aren't getting in the, an identification with the subject. They're not seeing the subject in, in its full glory. Uh, the, the other things that we, we worry about, I mentioned uh, diversity. So 49% of mixed maintained schools, nearly half, but for 1% of mixed maintained schools, send no girls on to take A-level physics. So that, that is a scandal. Whatever it's ha is happening in those schools, girls are getting a message that physics is not for them. And, of course, we know that to be uh, not the case. So, much of what we do is driven by ensuring this cultural entitlement. There we are. So, please do enjoy today. Uh, go into teaching. I mentioned earlier, incidentally, that there was nothing as satisfying as a physics explanation. I didn't do a hands up on that one, just in case. Uh, just in case anyone put their hand up. They, the, uh, but what you were thinking, I know, at the time was, do you know there is something more, more satisfying than a physics explanation? And that's giving a physics explanation. 
That is the most satisfying thing in the world. So I hope you have many years of that satisfaction. Uh, keep in touch with us, locate your nearest physics network coordinator, and have a good time today. I've got some links at the end. Joe is raring to go. There we are. Thank you very much.